Hi, this is Salim Bharti and welcome to TFR Insights. Chances are that most of our viewers have used a CMS at some point in their developer's life. Uh, it's critical to our workflow. Uh, and today we have with us um, a creator of uh, a headless CMS called Strapi. Peer, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Swap. I'm very happy to be with you today. Uh, CMS is not something new. We, you know, all of us, we do know, you know, it's, it's content management system. You can talk about Drupal open source. We can talk, I mean, there have been so many. So um, I just want, I want to know that what, what was the pain point? What was the problem that you saw that you wanted to solve despite the availability of all the CMSs that you wanted to create something new? So. So tell us a bit about the history and history of Strapi. Sure. So traditionally, CMSs have been around for decades, but now the content has not only to be displayed on websites, but also on mobile applications, on connected devices, and even the way to create a website really changed over the past few years because developers want to use modern front-end frameworks such as React, Angular, or Vue.js. And all of these technologies are designed to be connected to APIs to get the content and to display it their own way. So where in the traditional CMS, you have a backend to manage content and a front-end to display it. Now, those two things are really separated. So you have all of this front-end possibilities and the new uh, CMSs, uh, which are named headless CMSs, don't have doesn't don't have a front end anymore, but instead have an API which makes the content available to all of these platforms. And so when you when we created Stripe in 2015, so we really had this need. So we were working as freelance developers uh, using a lot of traditional CMSs, but as soon as we had to do a mobile a mobile application or a modern website, then you know it was just uh, two incompatible worlds. So we decided to create our own piece of so software. We started started using it uh, for some clients projects and then we decided to publish it on, uh, on GitHub and that was the beginning of Strapi. So uh, how much of this Strapi work was like, you know, totally ground up work or did you leverage some existing open source technologies as well? We do use a lot of open source technologies in Strapi. So the API of Strapi is based on Node.js. So we use Koa as a framework, we use Bookshelf and Mongoose as an ORM. Uh, Strapi can also be connected to any open source database, including SQLite, MySQL, MongoDB, or PostgreSQL. And the uh, dashboard of Strapi is made with React. So um, we have been using uh, open source technologies from the beginning, and we truly believe in open source. And you said you open sourced it on GitHub. Is is it fully open source, or there are some components which are not open source? Strapi is completely open source. Um, so all of the code base we developed um, with the community is available on GitHub. So this year, we are going to introduce an enterprise edition, which will be an extension of the uh, open source project. And the code base will be also available on GitHub. Obviously, it will be under a proprietary license, um, but the code will be developed in the open. So which license do you currently use for the open source project? MIT, because we truly believe in open source and we do not want any friction for the usage or the contributions to the open source project. Traditionally, we have seen that open source, I will just talk about open source for a while before moving to Strapi and some of its features. Traditionally, we have seen the, the model of open source. There's a couple of models. One is, you know, kind of Red Hat model with purely open source, and then you offer subscription on top of that, and then open core model, and then there are different models where the core is proprietary, where everything around is, is open. So uh, it looks like in your case that Strapi, you know, the, the project will remain open source, but the enterprise version will be proprietary. Is that correct? So at the very beginning, we really want, wanted to make something great for developers um, because uh, we were our developers. So we did, um, we did the best product possible with a great documentation, not uh, limited uh, and uh, available only for uh, paid customers. So um, making something great for all this community was definitely our priority. And then when we started uh, having some contributions, um, you know, it was all about answering the uh, uh, GitHub issues and uh, encouraging people to submit pull requests. Um, so if someone has an issue, then you can uh, provide uh, them guidance to solve this issue and uh, uh, 
so they can do their first pull request. And then when they start making pull requests, you can expect more and more from the same contributor. So this is super exciting. Um, so I think we really did a, a very good job at this. And then um, when you want to convert uh, your users to um, to to paid features, I think it's uh, really a matter of features. So at the beginning, you will have uh, lots of requests, and then you will start seeing uh, requests from product managers, uh, marketing teams, um, and this is uh, when we started to understand that we uh, really had uh, to start um, developing paid features. Um, so now most of the requests regarding the enterprise edition are from product managers. Uh, so this is how we uh, convert these people to the paid edition. Is there any clear path, like for example, a developer using the free version, you know, free of cost version, and they want to become a paid user uh, the enterprise edition is just an extension of the community edition which means uh, you just easily get access to a set of uh, advanced features and you don't have to uh, change anything in your own project in your existing projects um, so just click on a, on a button to subscribe and uh, you get access to a new set of features. Can you talk about who is using it can you kind of like what kind of workloads makes more sense? I don't know if you can name any user, but that would be great too. Thousands of companies are using Strapi all over the world. So just to name a few, um, IBM, the NASA, Yahoo, Discovery Channels are using Strapi. And the main use cases we have with Strapi is corporate websites, editorial websites, and e-commerce websites. As you mentioned earlier, there are so many uh, already pro projects there or products there. So what is unique about Strapi? Why should a developer even care about it? Yeah, so there are lots of headless CMSs out there, but most of them are SaaS. But the reality that the traditional CMS market is historically led by open source CMSs, such as WordPress. So there's no reason why the headless CMS market wouldn't be led by an open source headless CMS. And the reason behind this is that big companies really want to host their CMS on their servers for data privacy reasons. And also developers want to have the ability to customize the CMS, both in the dashboard and the API. So from the beginning, we decided to make Strapi open source. And so that's a very big difference compared to many of our competitors. But it's not only open source, um, it's very flexible, um, especially the content structure, which means if you have a home page with a very complex structure, so you are managing a tagline, uh, testimonials, uh, slider, so all of these kind of things, you can easily do it in Strapi, and it's also completely customizable. So both the dashboard, but also the API. So you can just override any API endpoint. Uh, it can be done super easily. And so you can extend Strapi connected to any other service. So it is extensible by design. What is the major difference between a regular CMS and a headless CMS from developer's point of view or a user's point of view or you know, kind of the consumer's point of view? So first of all, there is no front end, which we, which means it's way more lightweight. Um, and, you know, in a traditional CMS, you store lots of information in the database because you not only store the content, but also all of the informations about the layout. So it really add a lot of complexity and using a traditional CMS can quickly become messy. So thanks to headless CMSs, uh, fix things are, are, are things are much more clean. And also most of the um, traditional CMSs uh, are based on PHP, uh, which unfortunately is a bit slow. So we decided to go with uh, Node.js for Swapy, uh, which makes it way faster, um, especially uh, for APIs. Another thing for the content editors is that um, you really manage the content and only the content. And I think that's Finally, the uh, only purpose of a CMS is just about managing content, not uh, managing the display. So this uh, thing definitely make uh, headless CMS is uh, much more lightweight. With CMS, sometimes people, you know, if they're building something, they think that CMS is the solution that is answer to all their questions, but it's just another tool. The, the focus should be on content, not uh, most of the time you get stuck in managing that CMS itself. If you're a Drupal user, good luck with that. 
uh, WordPress kind of lowers the bar, you know, where you don't have to be a developer to actually add modules and things. So with, with Strapi, where is your focus? Do you focus more on giving more tools to the developer of the, pro not by developer, I don't mean the end user, but you know, the person who is developing the CMS, uh, in, in an organization so that he has more resources or you focus more on the end user of that CMS who is working on the content to push out? At the beginning, we really did things only for developers uh, because we were our developers. So we really, want, we really wanted to make something for them. And the other reason is that um, in a company, most of the time when the company has to decide um, what CMS are we going to use, they will ask developers and say, do you know any good CMS for our use case? And developers will uh, will recommend one. Um, so that was really our strategy at the beginning. But now we see more and more content editors um, asking for uh, content management features. So we are not uh, only developer focused anymore. Um, and uh, for the future, I think um, headless CMSs will become more and more easy to use. Uh, for now, it's uh, still a bit complex because for the front end, you have to ask a developer um, to create the front end and to set up the CMS for you. But what I think is that in a few years, you will use a headless CMS and you won't even know you are using headless CMS because within a few clicks, you will have the ability to choose the design and to automatically automatically configure your um, your your um, your CMS uh, and you will be up and running with a website or a mobile application completely online um, without the requirement of uh, any developer. So that would more or less like, you know, kind of SaaS kind of model where you just go in there, log in and do that, which also bring me to the question, what are the platform? Yeah, what are the platform that you support? Uh, I'm assuming that literally everything, but uh, uh, is it self-hosted? Are you working with some partners where they can offer a SaaS-like solution or you want to start your own Strapi service like uh, I think it's uh, uh, what uh, I think with Drupal and uh, WordPress, they have their own commercial uh, SaaS solutions. Strapi is self-hosted. You can host it on any cloud provider such as GCP, AWS, or Azure. You can also deploy it on any pass such as Heroku, or you can ever uh, use it in Docker or Kubernetes. So you really, you can deploy it on any server. We don't have any partnership with um, any cloud provider. Uh, what we do provide in the meantime is uh, one-click deploy buttons. So within one click, for example, you can deploy a Stripe instance on DigitalOcean uh, without coding anything. And in the future, uh, we will have a hosted version of Stripe. And so uh, that's something which will uh, come later. Right, now I'll come back to the point of plugins that you mentioned earlier, because plugin ecosystem is critical to any any uh, CMS because that's expand the extend the functionality. Uh, what kind of marketplace is there? Uh, is it like you know just similar to what we have seen in the industry where the community which can build any plugin you can build your own plugin or you can buy plugin. Yes, this is definitely what we plan to do because if you take a look at WordPress, what made the success of WordPress is not WordPress itself, but it really is the ecosystem of plugin and themes uh, that are um, available uh, for WordPress. So we do plan to have our own marketplace. So it would be a kind of app store. Um, I think Magento did a really good job at this. Our main challenge, I think, will be to um, certify uh, some plugins to make sure the quality is high, but this is something we are very confident with. And that way, everyone will have the ability to install any plugin or to publish uh, and share their, their plugin. So that's going to be super powerful. There are so many competing projects uh, in, in terms of CMS, which also mean that a lot of users might migrate from existing CMS for whatever reason. Uh, some users or many users that we already do is they mix and match the plugins, oh, sorry, uh, CMS depending on what kind of workload they are running on. So in terms of Strapi, uh, do you offer a migration path from other CMSs? At the same time, can people also mix two different CMSs with Strapi and you, they are able to share database because database is, what I think, of real value with any, any CMS. Yeah, so now we see a lot of companies migrating just sections of their websites or apps 
from the Arcturian CMS to Strapi. Um, so it's a great way to uh, slowly migrate the contents. And what we will do in the future is that we will have uh, importers, which means uh, you can easily migrate all of your content from a CMS to Strapi. So that's definitely in our plans. Excellent. Uh, one last question before we wrap this up is security is very, very critical when it comes to um, uh, CMSs. Uh, so what are you doing? Because it's not just that uh, with WordPress, they have adopted where they keep it updated automatically. Sometimes many users do not bother to go and check all the plugins. So do you have anything for security to ensure that Strapi will be a kind of relatively secure uh, than uh, other CMSs? So first of all, most of the security issues in traditional CMSs come from the template system because users um, download a free uh, template, they install it in their CMS, but uh, all of this um, available functions for the templates are most of the time not really secured or at least are not uh, correctly used. So in Hadla CMS, because you don't have a front end, then you don't have all of the security issues. Another thing is that um, in Headless CMS like Strapi, all of the API endpoints are secured by default, which means you cannot even get the content or push content into the CMS. So that's one thing. And also um, with an open source project, you can expect um, a notification from the community if they see any issue. And so if we have any, we can typically solve the issue within a few hours. So that's um, very helpful. Thank <laughs> you.